hello everyone so here we are with one more video about the research methodology or about generally the research and that is qualitative data collection instruments so welcome back to another topic welcome back to another video and welcome back to the channel english with a topper so if you're new on the channel don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get updates on new videos so let's talk about um, qualitative data collection instruments whenever we say qualitative data collection instruments we mean the instruments or the ways in which we can collect the qualitative data so whenever we are conducting our qualitative research we do need to collect the qualitative data so we use different instruments and different tools to collect our qualitative data and in this video we'll be discussing about the tools or the instruments that we can use to collect the qualitative data so the first tool or the first instrument is interviews so what is an interview an interview is a research method that involves asking questions to collect data from individuals who have knowledge experience or opinions on a particular topic or subject matter so whenever you're conducting a research then the first thing that you do is uh, you, you select your topic right so after the topic selection we make the questionnaire and after the formulating or after the development of a questionnaire we take interviews from the individuals who have experience who have knowledge or who can give us you know better opinions uh, their opinions about that very topic uh, okay so uh, this kind of uh, question answers or these kind of methodologies are called as the interviews because in interview we collect the qualitative data that is why it is also an instrument to collect the qualitative data that we can use in our research so characteristics of interviews in research okay it's clear that we might we, we must take interviews while conducting research but what should be the characteristics of an interview so the first characteristic is personal the interview should be personal which means that if i'm conducting the research then i must personally go to the respondent go to my informant and take interview from him or her similarly if you are conducting a research then you must personally go to the person to take interview it may be face to face interview it may be online interview or it may be any kind of interview but the thing that is important is the researcher must personally take the interview you should not send some other person to take the interview the next characteristic of interview is the qualitative that it, it must be qualitative it must be qualitative means that the questionnaire that we are using for the interview must contain the questions whose which have the answers in the qualitative form okay so when we'll ask questions from our respondent or our informant then he'll give us the qualitative data not the quantitative data we don't have to uh, ask the questions which are related to the numerics which have their answer in numerical form because we are talking about the qualitative data collection instruments so the questionnaire or the interview must be qualitative it must focus on the in-depth understandings the feelings and the thoughts of people that we get from an interview or that we collect from an interview okay the next uh, characteristic is time consuming yeah interviews are time consuming because you know if we'll not give much time to take interview then might be possible we will not be able to collect the required data we might lack the data if i um, take an interview in a hurry and i don't thoroughly discuss the topic with my respondent or with my informant then i might i might not get the required data or i might not get the accurate data so interview must be time consuming it must discuss each and every detail about the topic thoroughly in detail and in a descriptive manner types of interviews in research there are three types of interviews in research the structured the unstructured and the semi structured interviews okay the structured interviews are the interviews in which um, my respondent knows that what kind of questions i'm going to ask and i've already informed him or her that i'll be asking you this 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 these questions so this kind of interview is called a structured interview and unstructured interview means that my respondent or my informant doesn't know that what will be i asking with what will i be asking and in what order i'll be asking so this kind of interviews are unstructured interviews and semi structured interviews means that uh, my respondent uh, knows about some of the questions or some of the topics but i may 
add more questions i may ask more questions according to the need or according to the topic according to how uh, the discussion is going on so these kind of interviews are called as structured semi-structured interviews you know in, in my previous video i discussed the structured questionnaire unstructured questionnaire and semi-structured questionnaire so that thing also relates to this type these types of research or interviews in a sense that if i'm using a structured questionnaire my interview will be structured if i'm using unstructured questionnaire the interview will be an unstructured interview and it goes on in the same order so uh, if you have you haven't watched the video about the questionnaire then go and watch i'm pasting the link in the bio so if you will be uh, watching or if you'll watch the types of questionnaire then you'll get to know or you'll you'll get a deep understanding of what are the types of interviews interviews and research formats all three types of interviews above can be conducted in different formats you know all of these interviews can be conducted in different formats and what are the different format it might be focus group it might be one-to-one -one interview it might be an online interview it might be a phone call interview or you know a focus group is an interview format that includes a moderator and a group of participants meeting if i'm going to have a focus group uh, discussion or focus group interview then i'll be moderator of the group discussion and i'll have my team members who will be discussing the topic in detail so these kind of interviews are called as focus group interviews face-to-face -face interviews are the kind of interviews in which we engage to a respondent in face-to-face -face conversation we ask the questions and then our respondents gives us the data one-on-one -on -one interview it is the opposite of focus group interview you know because in focus group interview we focus on a group but in one-to-one -one interview we focus on a single person in a t at a time so if we'll be taking interview from one person then the next person then the next that'll be called as one to one one-on-one -on -one interview but if we are um, discussing within a group at a time that will be called a focus group interview then comes the online interview in this era of uh, social media or in this you know uh, era of uh, information and technology online interviews are uh, going on in our society or in our um, context very much both focus group and one to one on one interviews can be conducted online through google zoom google meet and there are so many apps through which we can conduct the online interviews or it might be on the phone call right it might be on a whatsapp audio call or simple phone call any kind of phone call so these all are uh, these all fall under the umbrella of the online interview phone interview this method does not always guarantee a response though it is relatively cheap and does not require the participant to meet face to face when we are interviewing someone on a phone on a on a phone call then you know it is cheap right we don't need to have a data connection we don't need to have much requirements it is very cheap but we are not uh, sure that we'll get a response because it, it is not always that we'll have a guarantee of a response so it is cheap but it might not work sometimes uh, advantages of interviews in research you know almost researchers use interviews to collect data because it has so much advantages and it's very feasible so advantages of interviews in research are <clears throat> when conducting qualitative research interviews are a valuable tool for gathering rich and in-depth data that captures the complexity of participants experience and perspectives interviews offer several advantages including the ability to probe and clarify participants responses right suppose i'm taking interview from a person and uh, <clears throat> he or she is <clears throat> oh he or she is giving me the data and uh, if i don't understand or if i don't get a point that is being um, uttered by him or her then i might counter question i might probe and i might clarify that what my participant or what my informant is saying so this is an advantage that if we are taking interviews we get a thorough and in-depth understanding of the topic <coughs> it establishes a repo with participants okay so uh, suppose i'm conducting research and i'm going to take interviews from so many individuals then i'll establish a repo with my participants i'll have um, a good conversation with them i'll have a good bonding with them so this also is an advantage of interviews and tailor the interview to the specific needs of the research project you know uh, i might ask different questions from different participants 
based or um, varied according to the knowledge that they have if i am taking an interview from a teacher then my questions might change or if i am taking an interview from a student then my questions might alter so this also is an advantage that if we are interviewing different persons then we can change our questions according to the um, interest and according to, to the knowledge of our respondent or we can also change according to what we need if i am um, you know searching the causes then i might ask or i might take interview about the causes of something but if i need the um, effects or some other thing then i might change the interview or i may change the questions so this also is an advantage that through an interview we acquire or we collect the desired data disadvantages of interviews they are time consuming it's an it, it is a disadvantage sometimes and it is resource intensive it needs so many resources if i have to take interview from a person who is not uh, within um, my geographical area i might have to travel i might have to do, i might have to take you know time from their uh, pa so uh, sometimes interviews become difficult because of the resource intensity that we need a uh, lots of resource to conduct that interview and uh, it may be subject to interviewer bias or social desirability bias if i'm taking an interview from birth, from a person on a topic on a certain topic he might give me the information uh, which is biased which means that he might he or she might give me the information which includes his or her own interest his or her own judgment so this also is an disadvantage of interviews what is the objective of interview definitely the objective of interview is to collect the data collect the primary data but this thing is written in detail in this slide you can uh, pause the video and jot them down the second instrument which we can use to collect qualitative data is case study case study means the study of a case right process or record of search into development of a particular person group or situation or period of time suppose uh, I'm, I'm i'm doing a research on how children learn to use language or how a child learns to use language so i'll be selecting a single child one child then i'll be you know uh, studying his case that how he uses the language how he develops his language how he um, how he brings the changes in his in his language so uh, i'll be selecting a single case a single student and then i'll be collecting the data so these kind of um, this researches or these kind of methods are called as case studies there are so many kinds, uh, kinds of case studies collective case study descriptive explanatory instrumental or intrinsic collective case study uh, means uh, to study a case collectively collectively of a group or group of people descriptive case study means the um, this involves starting with a descriptive theory it's a case study in which we use a descriptive theory to collect the data explanatory case study they are often or they are mostly used to do casual investigations because we have to explain something or we have to investigate something in other words we can say that researchers are interested in looking at factors that may have caused certain things occur so uh, they might be uh, le let's say or let's suppose that um, there uh, happens uh, some event in our society so we'll be explaining that why this event happened we'll be uh, searching for the reasons so these kind of investigations are called as the explanatory case studies instrumental case studies these occur when the individual or group allows researcher to understand more than what is initially obvious to observer intrinsic case study okay in instrumental case study these are uh, conducted when researcher wants to understand more than what is initially observed if you want to go beyond the observation if you want to deep uh, if you want to dive deep into the case then we use the instrumental case study intrinsic case study it is 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 a, is a type of case study in which the researcher has personal interest so if i'm interested in certain topic i might go for the case study if i'm interested in the psychological um behaviors or psychological phenomena then i might go for a case study which will be called as intrinsic case study so intrinsic case study is kind of case study that involves a person's or a researcher's own and personal interest then comes the secondary research secondary research is also known as the desk research is is a research method that involves compiling existing data source from a variety of channel so in this kind of data collection we take the data 
from the researches from the studies from the articles from the thesis which are all ready researched by a researcher so uh, for example textbooks textbooks are already written after some kind of research okay so if i'm collecting um, my data from different textbooks then that will be an example of secondary research popular secondary research method data available on the internet the most uh, used secondary research method is the data available on internet if someone is going to find data on his or her um, topic about his or her topic then they'll just go to the internet mostly to the google scholars and then they'll collect the articles the thesis they are related to his or her uh, topic or generally their topic so these kind of um, methods are called as secondary research methods there are two types of secondary research methods internal and external internal refers to in-house data that can be gathered from the resources organization suppose i'm going to conduct a research on uh, tourism department so i'll go to the tourism department and take data from there this kind of data or these kind of researches are called internal researches and external researches uh, or external data is the kind of data that is published outside of uh, the organization i might go to a person who has already done research on the tourism department and i might take data from him so these kind of data or these kind of researches will be called as the external data researches expert opinion method it is self-explanatory it is a method in which we take data from a person who has expert opinion who is expert in that field suppose i'm conducting a research on language or linguistics so i'll go to a person who has expertise in linguistics who has expertise in language so i'll take data from him this method is called as the expert opinion method here's the example why expert opinion uh, research is important because whenever we go to a person who is expert we'll get the accurate data we'll get more data suppose when we are ill when we are not feeling well then we go to a doctor right why because doctor has expertise in that field so if we want to do research on linguistics we'll go to an expert the expert will well understand the topic and because of his well understanding because of his deep understanding we will get the accurate and required data surveys surveys are another type of data collection instrument which we can use to collect our uh, qualitative data on people's opinions beliefs attitudes and behaviors they involve asking participant to respond to a set of questions we we form a set of questions then we ask our participant to uh, give answers to that set of questions so this kind of surveys are called uh, this kind of methods are called surveys there may be online surveys okay so uh, online surveys are the surveys which are taken um, which are taken through online resources like google meet google zoom or any other kind of app there are four main survey um, data collection methods that are uh, paper survey telephonic survey face to face survey and panel survey paper survey means which uh, the method in which we print out our questions and then we distribute that questionnaire to our respondents telephonic survey is the survey which we uh, conduct on telephone face to face is the survey in which we go uh, and meet the person per, uh, the person person personally we meet him face to face and then we go for a survey and panel survey is the survey which is uh, taken in a kind of panel discussion and survey data is the data that we have extracted or that we collect from the survey uh, there are some limitations in online qualitative survey remember that while online surveys can provide valuable qualitative data they do have limitations for example they may lack the depth and richness of in-person interactions okay suppose um, there are two researchers one researcher conducts his survey personally face to face and the other researcher conducts his survey online so it is possible and it is obvious that in personal meeting or in face-to-face -face interaction we'll get more in-depth data and the person who's um, conducting an online survey might not get that much in-depth information so this is a this is a limitation of online survey then comes the observational study observational study means uh, we observe something and then we collect the data we might observe a person individually or we might observe a group of people we might observe even so whole society or we might observe even a whole culture so these kind of studies are called as the observational studies 
there are two main types of observational studies cross sectional studies the first one in cross sectional study data is collected as a specific point in time we have the same time suppose 12 to 1 at this same time we got to different people we got to different situations and then we observe people so time is same but we have different observations so these kind of observations are called as the cross sectional observation this kind of study provides snapshot of the population at a particular time it will give us an understanding understanding that fr from 12 to 1 in the time span of 12 to 1 what people were doing what people were thinking what people were busy in so we'll have uh, an observation of the people within the same time period then the second uh, kind is longitudinal study in longitudinal study data is collected over an extended period suppose I'm, um, I'm, I'm, I'm researching or I'm conducting my research on a group of people so I'll observe the group of people in uh, January then I'll go for observing the group of people in uh, March and then I'll go for observing them in May or June so what do I do is that I collect the data over an extended period of time from the same people from the same group of people from the same respondents so these kind of uh, studies are called as the longitudinal studies and it has some limitations what are the limitations the group or the people might have their perceptions changed over that period of time they might change their thinking they might change their behavior so there might be an error in my data collection and data analysis so this was all about uh, what are the main instruments through which we can collect the qualitative data okay let's revise them one by one let's take the names of the uh, processes or the instruments one by one we use observational studies we use surveys we use expert opinion methods we use secondary research we use case studies and we use the interviews to collect the data so these are the instruments through which we can collect our qualitative data while conducting our research that is qualitative so i hope uh, that uh, you might have i i don't only hope but i know that you'll have a better understanding of this topic that's all for now and that's all for this video thank you for watching don't forget to like share and subscribe and comment so bye bye your love is